Student protesters were being tracked and surveilled ahead of a planned walkout to protest gun violence in Colorado. Now, Colorado, much like the rest of the country, is grappling with endless gun violence. And these students decided, you know what, we're going to plan to walk off campus to essentially have people finally listen to our demands here. We need common sense gun reform. But this bombshell report from The Intercept notes that the state agency known as the State's Intelligence Command Center issued a bulletin to authorities warning of a planned nationwide school walkout. Now, the students demand action has coordinated a, this is what the bulletin said, has coordinated a nationwide school walkout amongst students throughout the country with similar trends to those seen in Colorado, stated the Situational Awareness Bulletin dated April 4th, which was issued by the Colorado Information Analysis Center. Now, the Colorado Information Analysis Center sounds super benign, except it's really not, okay? But first, a little more from the bulletin itself. The planned school walkouts are believed to be in response to several recent school shootings. The CIAC, and that's the Colorado Information Analysis Center Bulletin states, going on to identify over two dozen Colorado schools where walkouts were expected to take place. Now, just to fill you guys in, I know there's been a lot of shootings lately. What are the two shootings that inspired this walk off or walkout? Last month, for instance, two school administrators were shot and wounded by a 17 year old in Denver's East High School. On March 27th, six people, including three students, were killed when a former student opened fire at a religious school, Covenant School, in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, what the hell is the CIAC? And what is their true objective here? Well, CIAC's mission is preventing acts of terrorism, taking an all crimes, all threats approach, according to the agency's own website. It's not clear how the student walkouts relate to this mission. Experts have long criticized fusion centers like CIAC for operating with broad authorities and very little oversight. And so, it has a benign sounding name, but the whole purpose of this, I guess, government entity in Colorado is to fight terrorism and potential threats. These students, if you ask me, unless there's information that we're not privy to, haven't seemed to pose any kind of threat. Seems like they just wanted to practice their First Amendment rights and walk off campus to protest and, and call for more gun regulation which a lot of people in this country want. But of course, lawmakers don't want to listen to that. And in this case, you have like an intelligence agency within the state of Colorado, just keeping tabs on the kids. Brian, thoughts on this? It's a reminder for us all to be very conscious of what is happening on a state level with our agencies and our legislatures. I've always thought that the scariest stuff that goes on in America is being perpetrated by you know, super dominant, super majorities in state legislatures because one, there is very little oversight. Two, journalistically, there are very few people who cover legislatures. I think, mm -hmm. like in California, for instance, not that 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 is a radically you know right leaning kind of legislature, but I I heard there were there was only one reporter in Sacramento covering it for the Associated Press. There's no way for anyone to really be able to monitor what's going on in the states. Three, I'm like, I, I think that like grownups are scared and intimidated by the power of social media and this mobilization of young people mm -hmm. resisting the pushback on assault weapons. I think people are freaked out and I'm not shocked. I, I just wonder what kind of oversight they're doing, like what kind of monitoring are they doing? And who are they, are they selecting out individuals to monitor? Or are they tapping into phones? Are they, what are they doing? Because the people who need oversight the most are people who already own assault weapons. Those folks should be monitored, presumably. They are the ones who are at most risk of going in and shooting a place up. Um, because these guns keep appearing over and over and over in these mass shootings, that's the data. So I, I just wonder what they're doing um, on, on like in terms of like their boots on the ground. 
Yeah, I mean, look, if we had a process in place to do the appropriate vetting prior to someone purchasing a gun. If we close gun show loopholes, loopholes pertaining to private sellers, then we we don't need to have a conversation about a government agency keeping tabs on, you know, gun owners or anything like that. The problem is we just I mean, look at Florida. Like what Florida just did was so unnecessary. It's inc- it was already incredibly easy to obtain guns and engage in concealed carry in the state of Florida. But Ron DeSantis, along with the super majority of Republicans in the state legislature, decided to do away with the most laxed gun regulations they have in Florida, including permit requirements for concealed carry, training requirements for concealed carry. It's just unnecessary. It's so, it was already so easy to purchase guns in Florida. But in this case, we're not having a discussion about gun regulation. We're having a discussion about the government surveilling Americans who are upset at the lax gun laws and want to practice their First Amendment rights. These students are doing nothing wrong. And it reminds me of what the FBI did along with the New York Police Department after 9-11. They wasted resources in surveilling Muslim students. They would go to various like field trips with Muslim students because hey, just the very nature of them being Muslim, I guess in their minds, automatically posed a a terrorist risk in in the United States. It was just so stupid. And I see the same thing happening here. We learn no lessons. I mean, it just keeps happening over and over again. And to your question, uh, Brian, we don't know what this surveillance consists of, right? They're keeping their eyes on these kids, but what does that mean? Are they tapping their phones? Did they get a warrant if they are doing that? I mean, I'd like to see more of an investigation into this, but this is a an important story that at least lets us know what you know what this government agency is up to in Colorado. And and it is also another sign of this hypocrisy about limited government. I, I just you know you hear it as a tenet of like the Republican base. It's just another example of them, you know, not wanting, they want to be your mom, they want to be your dad, they want to be your minister, they want to be your teacher, they want to be your police officer. They want to basically control every thought that's coming out of your liberal little head and push back on, on, on bad policy. And I think government acts proportionate to the threat that they feel is at foot. And I believe that. We're at a moment because I mean, look, I'm in my late 50s and I was debating gun control issues when I remember back in high school and it was the same debate. It's so depressing. Same debate we would have. We'd stand up and we'd do debates and debate class and it was the same stuff. And nothing has changed, nothing will change. It's going to take seismic, crazy levels of protest to make this thing uh, change. And I think we're fast approaching that. Yeah, I think I think it goes even beyond massive protests. I mean, we saw massive protests in the summer of 2020, and we still see stories involving you know cruel and unusual punishment in our prison systems. You know, people still dying from excessive force. I mean, so it's it goes beyond just protesting. I think that you need mm-hmm. to have a well organized outside pressure campaign that just persistently pressures Congress to do something. Without that, we're gonna keep this cycle going where there's a mass shooting, there's outrage over the lax gun laws. That'll last for about 24 hours. But by the next day, Donald Trump is facing another indictment. And so our attention goes to that story instead. You need to have like an organized group of people that just persistently pressure members of Congress and strategically pressure members of Congress to do something about this. Otherwise, if they don't feel the pressure, they don't see the incentives. And that's the real problem. What has been effective is being a single issue voter and on and abortion has been an example of that. Mm -hmm. And we just saw that in Wisconsin. I think that when politicians are brave enough to run on an on a on basically an anti-gun sort of thing, anti-assault weapon, that's their main I think it's time for that. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be, you know. To, to get the change we want, people are going to have to use that issue effectively when they're running on the left. I don't see that happening anytime soon, but we'll see, we'll see. 
But in the meantime, maybe the you know local authorities should stop spying on harmless students who are looking to protest and instead focus their attention on potentially foiling some of these mass shootings. That that would be great. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.